Hey everybody, it's David. Today, we're gonna talk about the do's and don'ts of recording yourself at home. Okay, let's get into it. So you've gotta make an audio video recording. Now, I'm imagining that you're a singer or an instrumentalist, and you've gotta make a recording for a summer program, an orchestral audition, uh, promotional materials, or maybe just for fun. This could really even be for your TikTok videos. Everything I'm gonna talk about today is about good audio video production, and it's gonna really help elevate your videos no matter what you're using them for. So I've got some do's and don'ts here that are hopefully gonna elevate your recordings and really help you stand out above the rest. These do's and don'ts cover audio, video, lighting, and some details that you maybe just wouldn't have thought about if you hadn't watched this video. First up, find a good room. Now this one's really important because you're likely gonna be doing very little post-processing on your recordings and anything that the microphones pick up, you're gonna hear in your recordings, and that includes bad room sound. One of the things you need to look out for in a room is too much echo or reverberation. If you clap your hands and you hear a flutter coming back to your ears, then that is gonna do the same thing with whatever audio you're recording, and it's gonna leave for some pretty nasty sounds in your recordings. So one of the things that you can do is make sure that the room has some treatment on it. So maybe that means it's a carpeted room, or, if it's, or maybe it's a room with drop ceiling that's got ceiling tiles. Uh, or sometimes just having things on the walls will help. You can see behind me, I've built some acoustic panels and that's one route to go. But even just having drapes up on the walls or hanging another curtain, something that can cut down the reflections from side to side is gonna be really, really helpful. Now on the opposite side, you can have a room that sounds too dead. And that's a great thing if you're recording close mic'd and you're gonna be doing a bunch of post-processing and you want a really dry signal so that you can deal with it later. But for acoustic musicians that are playing an instrument or singing and you're trying to get a whole ambiance, or maybe you're recording with a collaborative pianist, you don't really want that super dry sound because it sounds kind of dull and boring and that's the last thing you want when somebody's gonna be listening to this recording. As performers, a lot of us are used to singing or playing in nice recital halls or even big concert halls. And these have really specifically tuned acoustics so that you sound great no matter what. Unfortunately, when you're talking about recording in home or in a small studio, you don't really get control over the acoustics like you would in a big hall. So anything you can do to make that reverb sound as good as possible in that room is gonna be a big plus. Now, if your room is way too dry, it is possible to add a little bit of reverb in post-production to try to warm up the sound a little bit. But really, if you can get it perfect into your microphone the first time around, you're gonna be way happier and there's gonna be a lot less futzing with it at the end. Don't number one, your computer's webcam. Please, whatever you do, do not use your computer's webcam to make your recordings. Now I know this one's particularly bad. I've got a Dell XPS 15 and it's got like the looking down the nose camera and it's really terrible. But I promise you, yours isn't much better. Laptop webcams are there for convenience, not for quality. I promise I won't belabor the point too much more, but let me just say that you've got a bunch of different, better options for recording your video. And that's gonna take us to the next do. Okay, let's pause real quick. Now, if you have any questions about anything you've heard so far, please leave a comment down below. I promise I'm either gonna make a video about that question that you have, or I'm gonna respond to it. So if you've got a question, please ask it. Also, if this has been helpful, please hit the like button. I'm a really new channel, really trying to get out to as many people as I can. Do number two, use your cell phone. Today's cell phones are surprisingly good at recording video. I personally think that you'd have to spend at least five to $600 to buy a camera that can make better video recordings than the cell phone that's in your pocket right now. Now I'm talking about any iPhone that's probably an iPhone 6 or newer or a Samsung Galaxy phone that's uh, maybe an S7 or newer. They're gonna be fantastic phones for you and they're gonna record really good video. And if you pair one of these phones with a good external audio source, you're gonna be able to make really, really high quality videos. 
Don't number two. Record through Zoom. Zoom is great, or it's terrible, depending on your opinion of video conferencing, but in any case, it shouldn't be used to record your videos. If you're using your cell phone, just using the cell phone's camera app is the perfect way to go. There are also some great third-party video recording apps that can give you extended functionality. And if you're not doing the first don't, which was using your computer's webcam, you're gonna have no problem avoiding the Zoom app. The next few do's and don'ts are gonna be related to audio. Do number three, use a stereo microphone. So first of all, what do I mean by stereo? Well, when you're recording audio, you really have two options. It can be mono, which is a single audio channel, or it can be stereo, which is two audio channels. So that would be one left channel and one right channel. And then the two of them play together and you get this really nice, big, expansive sound. Now, if you listen to a mono source, it sounds like it's just right in the middle, kind of right between your ears. I think a stereo microphone is the best way to capture a dynamic performance. And really, I'm talking about something like this. This is the Zoom H1n. It's a relatively expensive stereo recorder. I made an entire video about it, which I'll link up here. You can go check that out and get all the details. But this Zoom microphone costs about $100. You can mount it on top of your cell phone and get great audio. Now this particular recorder has two microphones, a left and a right, and they're in a 90 degree XY orientation. The wide sound stage that a stereo microphone gives you is gonna give you a really nice lifelike sound. If you're recording an individual instrument or an unaccompanied voice, or maybe you've got headphones in and you're singing along or playing along to a pre-recorded track, then you can get away with having a mono mic. But, especially if you're going to be with a collaborative pianist making a recording, you should really have a stereo microphone so that you get some really nice wide imaging and it's going to sound really natural. Don't number three, USB microphones. Microphones like the Blue Yeti and Snowball have become extremely popular and they're really great for video conferencing and other applications where audio quality is not necessarily your highest concern. Another reason I suggest something like the Zoom H1n is because USB microphones can be really limited in use. So I'm dreaming of a time when we're not all stuck inside and I would love to be able to tell you that the microphone that you spent a bunch of money on is gonna be really useful for you in the future. So something that a microphone like this can do for you that a USB microphone can't is you can take it on location with you. You don't have to have it plugged into a computer. So you can just set it up in front of a performance and make a great recording. You don't have to worry about having that computer with you. Do number four, check your audio levels. If you're using an external microphone of almost any kind, you're gonna have control over how much sound that microphone picks up. In the audio world, we call this gain. Most microphones are gonna have some way of showing you how loud the signal is that's coming into that microphone. On your portable handheld recorders, there'll probably be a screen on the front of it and you see bars that go from the left and the right. The left means that the sound is really, really quiet and the right means that the sound is really, really loud. Some microphones have a way of showing you that the sound is way, way too loud. The microphone is set to too high of a sensitivity and you get into this place called clipping. And that's where you hear this awful distorted sound, crackling sound, maybe the sound is breaking up and going in and out entirely. And that is a good sign that your gain is way too loud. This is really common in singers and instruments uh, like trumpet or any other brass instruments that are capable of really high sound pressure levels. And in that case, you just need to back off that gain, back off on the sensitivity of that microphone until you find a volume level that is not clipping. Some of those microphones are even gonna have a scale that goes from negative infinity all the way up to zero. Zero is that level that you never ever wanna pass. That's where you get into clipping. So if you shoot for the loudest parts of your recording at around that minus 12 mark, that's gonna be a really good place to set your levels. On the other hand, if your gain is set too low, if that microphone is not set sensitive enough, then your sound is barely gonna be coming off of the bottom, the left-hand side of those bars. If that's the case, then the signal you're recording is way too quiet. And if you were to try to bring up that level in post-production, you'd probably end up hearing a whole lot of hiss. 
So if you've got a recording that's got a ton of hiss in it, you might have just recorded the level a little bit too low. And you can go back with a slightly higher gain setting and you'll get much cleaner audio. Some of this hiss is gonna come down to the quality of the microphone too, and that's something I can cover in another video. Don't number four, use selfie mode. For now, I'll assume that the best camera you have access to is your cell phone. It's gonna be really tempting to use the selfie screen so that you can see exactly what's going on as you're recording. But for a couple of reasons, I'm gonna suggest that that's not the best way to go about it. For one, anytime you've got yourself on that screen next to you, it's gonna be really, really easy to just be looking at the screen when what you really wanna be doing is looking at the camera lens. Sometimes this just isn't gonna matter because you're not gonna be looking at the camera anyway. I can't imagine watching an art song or aria recording and having the, the performer stare into the camera the entire time. I think it would probably be a little bit weird and it kind of reminds me of a Pavarotti recording from a movie that I saw once. Y'all know what I'm talking about maybe. Uh, it's pretty terrifying, so you're probably not gonna do that. There is, however, a second reason that I think you shouldn't use the selfie camera, and that is that the rear-facing camera is usually higher quality. So going from this camera up here to this camera back here is probably gonna give you better results. Your mileage may vary. The one nice thing about the selfie camera is it's usually wider than the one on the back, unless you've got a camera that's got an ultra wide rear facing camera. So you're gonna have to do your homework here and figure it out for your phone. But just remember that usually the camera on the back is gonna be better than the camera on the front. Do number five, have good lighting. This one can be really easy to overlook, but it makes a massive impact on your recordings. A lot of the time, you're just gonna be recording in a room that has one or maybe a couple of overhead lights, and that light's gonna be coming straight down on top of you, and it sometimes can cast some weird shadows. So one of the really important things is gonna be trying to get some light on your face. You can do this a bunch of different ways. You can get really creative about it. You can use a dedicated video light if you wanna spend a few dollars and that's great, but there are probably some things sitting around the house that you can use to really up your game. So you can use a lamp, uh, any table lamp or floor lamp. A lot of people have gooseneck lamps where you can kind of change the angle of that light. And if you've got something like that, you can try pointing it right at you. If you have a big source of light, like a flood lamp or something like that, you can try putting that behind a bath curtain and that will probably do incredible things to make this beautiful diffuse light across your face. Another thing to think about is the direction of the light. If you're in a room that's got a bunch of windows, you need to be very careful about where you're standing. Because if you've got that window right behind you and there's a lot of bright sun, you're gonna be very, very backlit. And in that situation, you might disappear entirely and you'll turn into a silhouette. However, if you turn around to face the window, you can get a lot of bright natural light to shine on you. Bonus do, check the recording requirements. You might be asked to submit a recording in a specific file format or a specific aspect ratio, either landscape or portrait. Make sure you know what that is ahead of time because there are some things that are gonna be really, really difficult for you to fix in post-production. For example, if you shot your entire recording in portrait mode, but you need to submit it in landscape mode, it's gonna be next to impossible to make that work in post-production. You're probably just gonna have to re-record it. That's gonna do it for me today. I hope you learned something and good luck on your next recording. If you like this video, please hit the like button down there and I'll see you in the next one.